Enzo. Uh, Enzo, <laughs> who uh, from a young age has always kept me motivated. He trained me like a professional from the age of 12. Millions of people around the world witness their heroes earning exorbitant sums of money from fights, living a luxurious, happy life, and having access to every expensive amenity in the world. In short, they witness their heroes living the dream life. However, if only you knew that some of them went through the roughest stages of life to reach this level. They starved in their early years not having enough money for food and a home to live in. Many got bullied and abused in school, went through anxiety, fear of heckling or physical harm and had horrible childhoods. Their desire for a better life and honor in society allowed them to succeed and break out of bullying and poverty. Bullying can be detrimental, but it can also spark something special in the victim, giving them a strength that no one who hasn't been bullied will ever understand. Among those brave people, a story emerged about the Italian dragon, Joe Calzaghi, the son of a bus conductor who defied the odds to pull off this incredible accomplishment. An individual who didn't let his past stand in the way of his aspirations and paved the way for millions of other fighters. Joe Calzaghi, one of the most well-known personalities in boxing, broke through to the public eye in 1997 with a stunning victory over Chris Eubank. For my money, he's getting the better with the right hand. Realizing lifelong dreams of success fostered since boyhood. Born in London, raised in Wales, Joe's Welsh heritage was officially recognized when he won the BBC Welsh Sports Personality of the Year Award in 2002. The 2007 BBC Sports Personality of the Year is Joe Kawasaki. I love boxing, that's, that's, what I've always, that's what I've always wanted to do. Enzo, <laughs> who uh, from a young age has always kept me motivated, he trained me like a professional from the age of 12. Joe's family relocated to Newbridge, his mother's hometown when he was two. Encouraged by his Italian father, Enzo, Joe showed interest as a teenager in the ring and on the field, but ultimately decided to pursue boxing instead of football as a result of his father's encouragement. Joe donned boxing gloves for the first time at age nine, but he continued to pursue a career in football until his early adolescence. Despite feeling picked on at school for excelling in sports, he persisted in his goal and went on to compete in and win the British Schoolboy Championships. The referee has stopped the contest to avoid any further punishment. <laughs> the half kick night. I'm going to school, believe it or not, I got bullied. As a small, skinny boy, Joe was terrified when he first stepped into the gym at the age of nine, which was two miles away from his home. Seeing the passion of tall young brads punching the bags, the smell of the gym, the sweat, and the noise of the bags swinging around through punching, Joe was completely mesmerized as he had never seen something like that before. He started his boxing career at that gym, which was made of wood and tin. It was always cold, dusty, dirty, and the council warned them that it was going to collapse any second. But Joe's passion didn't let anything slow him down on his way to success. He even used to practice boxing on rolled up carpet and settee cushions at home. As he grew up, Joe experienced a lot of bullying. He fully isolated himself from everyone and retreated into his shell when he was 14. Joe despised being at school so much that he often avoided it by not showing up for it. Joe often spent time alone as he had no friends in school. His father has mentioned in interviews that he was beaten by a group of 40 boys who came on bikes to his home. Boxing was a way for Joe to escape and have self-worth. He found a way to let his emotional pain out through physical pain. He was so distressed from school that he found solace in boxing. And so boxing, well, it's, it's weird because boxing was my escapism and my self-worth. As time evolves, the ultimate goal of boxing stars has shifted from winning world championships to holding and defending titles in numerous weight classes, thus becoming the undisputed world champion because that will make them a consistent contender in the boxing world. Joe also wanted to become an undefeated boxer. In his 15-year career inside the ring, the unbeaten super middleweight champion left an unbroken trail. Joe Calzaghi, a professional boxer fought out of the United Kingdom, finished his career with a perfect 46-0 record, which included 32 knockouts. The Pride of Wales has won the WBO, IBF, WBA, and WBC belts in the super middleweight division, unifying the titles.
With almost 120 amateur fights under his belt, he went on to win four schoolboy abat titles, then three consecutive adult British abat crowns from 1991 to 1993. As a result, he became just the second boxer in history to win these titles in the welter, light middle, and middleweight weight classes. Joe transitioned from amateur to professional boxing in 1993, making his professional debut at the Cardiff Arms Park on the Lewis Bruno card, with his father serving as his coach and trainer. How good is he going to be in the pro ranks here in the super middleweight division? From Newbridge in Gwent, the Welsh fans like this. He wouldn't last long as an undercard fighter. At first glance, Joe Calzaghe appeared to be a lock to conquer the world when he initially became a professional in 1993, following a phenomenal amateur career that included three straight abat titles, each at a different weight. Four years later, he had accomplished his goal. It's good left to the body from uh, Calzaghe. On October 11, 1997, Joe had to confront his toughest decision on the full Monte card in Sheffield. He fought British boxing star Chris Eubank that evening in a 12-round contest for the vacant WBO super middleweight title. Eubank, who was competing in his 22nd WBO World Championship match, clearly had more experience than his comparatively inexperienced southpaw opponent. On the other hand, Chris lacked his opponent's enthusiasm, athleticism, and stamina, which showed. After 12 fierce rounds in which Eubank was brutally knocked to the ground, the Newbridge hero was crowned the new champion. Fast start of 10, first round. Oh, the, the winner who is now WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World. Calzaghe's shockwave fist heralded the beginning of a great new age in Welsh boxing. In his second defense, Joe, with his father in his corner, faced Juan Carlos Jimenez, one of the toughest competitors in the world. Juan had previously performed admirably in two world title fights in Britain and was the WBO title's middleweight champion. Joe successfully stopped the tenacious Peregrine while Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn failed to do so, which is again an outstanding achievement for the Welshman. Then, in Newcastle in February 1999, came Robin Reed, the former WBC champion, in a thrilling domestic duel in which Joe ultimately prevailed by split decision despite suffering a serious hand injury. In an exciting return to his native Wales in April 2001, Calzaghe knocked off Mario Vade in the opening round in front of 5,000 spectators at the Cardiff International Arena. Calzaga's rise to fame was delayed for a while, but he finally achieved it after the lacy fight, where he destroyed the supposed next great thing. Calzaghe is starting to celebrate the greatest performance of his boxing career. Well, that's it. It's all over. Lacy comes forward and braces Calzaghe. Joe's win over Kessler may have been his best. While the wins over Hopkins and Jones Jr. were the icing on the cake. says go right ahead and fight. Calzaghe added to his history by successfully defending his world title 21 times, a record that stands today. Even though some of Joe's opponents weren't exactly top-tier competitors, still managing to hold the super middleweight championship for a decade takes some doing. Calzaghe fought on and retained his world champion title without allowing any of his 46 opponents to get close to him, remaining undefeated to this day. After separating from his promoter, Joe competed in his final fights all around the world, and he announced his retirement in early 2009. In joining an elite club of 10, Joe Calzaghe completed his tenure as an unbeaten world champion, with colleague fighter and friend Ricky Haddon hailing him as the greatest British boxer we've ever had. Best British boxer of all time. Calzaghe. Joe Calzaghe. Joe Calzaghe for me. But when you're in this game as long as I have, and you know you're boxing like I'd like to think, you know, you know when you're looking at class. Big. Following his retirement, Joe made numerous appearances on some of the most popular shows in the country, including Strictly Come Dancing. With experience in both business and sport, Joe and his father Enzo founded their very own boxing promotion organization, Calzaghe Promotions, as a result of their ability to draw parallels between the two realms and encourage competition in a professional setting. In 2018, Welsh boxing champion Joe Calzaghe discusses the hardest year of his life following the passing of his father Enzo. The Calzaghe family was devastated by the death of the 
the Italian boxing coach at the age of 69. After receiving instruction at Newbridge Boxing Club, he worked day and night to coach his son Joe during his illustrious 46-fight career, during which he won the WBO, WBC, and WBA super middleweight titles. They had an excellent working relationship during a career that solidified their status as Welsh and international sports superstars. Now it's no doubt that Calzaghi is an anomaly in the boxing world. Some observers even go so far as to claim that Joe Calzaghi deserves to be recognized as the best British fighter of all time, with many even considering him to be the greatest super middleweight in history. The exceptional nature of Calzaghi cannot be denied. That is beyond any doubt. As far as how he said he would like to be remembered, Calzaghi has got what he wanted.